I think no one who holds an art card or bus ticket will ever do this crazy and sort of stupid journey, which is traveling to all transit centers of Edmonton in one day. Who actually does this? Holy sh**. To do this, I had to plan my journey well ahead of time and decided what's the best route for me. And after several days of planning like a pro, I found the most optimized route that would take a total of 9 hours and 40 minutes, including wait times. What am I doing with my life? I started at Century Park Station again, where I began my every LRT station video 3 years ago, but this time to travel southbound to Heritage Valley. This is the southernmost transit center in Edmonton. Century Park is the current terminus of the Capital Line LRT because it is being expanded south. The station has some gravel parking lot close to it and is marked as a park and ride station. Hopefully this signifies that these lots might be redeveloped in the future. There is a medium density condo building next to the bus station as well as some small commercial stores. The station also has a convenience store located at a narrow hallway on the bus terminal and a bike lockup station where you can drop your bike here. My first bus route is a 700X to Heritage Valley. This is an express route to Heritage Valley. I'm gonna start the timer once the bus departs. The bus departed on time but was stuck in the transit center due to the traffic light. This makes me feel like a plane about to take off. Actually, more accurately, like taxiing. The construction for the southern expansion of the Cabral Line has begun immediately south of Century Park. This extension is a 4.5 km extension passing through the Black Mud Creek, Twin Brooks, and Heritage Valley. Once I made it to Ellerslie Road, traffic seemed easier to breathe. Is it just me, or does anyone else feel like we're out of Edmonton city limits once we go past Anthony Henday Drive? I looked up about Heritage Valley earlier. It seems like a transit center out of nowhere and yeah, it is. This transit center is a park and ride stop with two all-day bus routes, on-demand transit, and one rush hour only bus to Chappelle. I appreciate the art on the wall of the terminal. I guess it's mainly for the people living south of Anthony Hende to drive here and then take transit to the city to work. Capital Line Phase 1 extension will end here, so I hope some better land use will follow suit. I don't think I've ever experienced a bus cruising this fast. I headed back to Century Park to hop on the Capital Line train to university. I felt bored of the regular view on the side window so I just walked to the front of the train for this, hoping that the operator won't be affected by it. Maybe in future videos, I should ask them if I can leave my camera in their driving cabin, cause this feels invading their privacy from time to time. University Transit Center is my next stop. Fun fact, this LRT station is the deepest in Edmonton when there's one, two, and three escalators taking you to the ground level. The Transit Center has a digital board displaying real-time information of bus arrivals and I think it's the only one in the city, not counting LRT stations. I had a 13 minute layover in here, so that's pretty good. The road leading to the transit center has a max speed of 20 km an hour, making vehicles look like they are crawling to the station. There are two bays or platforms or curbs, whatever you call it for the buses, for some other routes. My next bus is the 51 to Castle Downs Transit Center. The timer is already 47 minutes. Guys, it's so funny to me when this bus displayed Super Express, like, when Express is not enough, it's super fast. The bus departed on time from University again, traversing through some of the nicest views of Edmonton with curvy road and trees and the future Valley Line Bridge, several business corridors, and eventually stopped at Castle Downs quite on time. The transit center is close to a library, a recreation center, and has some regular and on-demand buses traveling to the northwest and northeast neighborhoods of the city and will connect to the future expansion of the metro line, which is in... 2077? The station also features some pretty nice architecture and wall art, as well as some bike racks. It also contains washrooms for the operators, which is critically needed at transit spaces, and so are public washrooms. I love how gatekeeping this gate ironically is. This amount of time I finished traveling throughout both the Capital and Metro Line LRT lines three years ago, and now I've only made it to four transit centers. My next bus arrived one minute late, and it's just a quick ride to the northernmost transit center of the city, Eau Claire. Look at these construction, it's a new, better looking sidewalk. All these houses are part of the suburban experiment, I guess. 
I arrived at Eau Claire on time and had a smooth transfer to Route 9 to reach the next transit center, Northgate. Eau Claire has coverage to several businesses off 97th Street and has some parking lots for park and ride. I was at the southernmost transit center of the city, and now I'm at the northernmost one. We departed on time again and cruised down 97th Street with a bus lane. Yo, bro, wanna race? No? Okay, bye. I arrived at Northgate on time. While the name Northgate reflects the name Southgate, this terminal is actually not connected to the Northgate Mall due to a wide road with a fence separating them. The transit center also features another convenience store, and I love these colored roofs. Right, I'm on a quest right now to look for the bus stop of Route 54, and I found it. That's a bus backing up. That takes skills. The 54 arrived on time again, and now it's time to reach West Clairview Transit Center. My luck is on the point today, I guess, because all buses have been on time for me, or maybe because ETS considered a good layover time for operators to alleviate delays. Is it just me, or does anyone else think that these crosstown routes can be more frequent during non-peak hours? Guys, let me show you. I plan to arrive at Clairview by 10.40am. It's now 10.42, and I've not seen the transit center or the train track anywhere. I don't know if I can make it to my LRT connection at 10.45. The time is now 10.44 and let's see if I can make it to the train. Nope, I did not make it. And as I walked down the train station's door seeing the train leaving the platform, I decided to just accept my fate and swing from here. <laughs> Clairview has two transit centers, West Clairview and East Clairview, connected by a pretty gloomy pathway of the Clairview LRT station. I would appreciate artwork and better lighting here. Different terminals provide different coverage to different landmarks, like the recreation center, the mall, the park and ride parking lot, or the community health center. The station also has a small convenience store. I love these stores so much for some reason. They allow small business people to thrive and an opportunity for a quick snack or stay hydrated. I'm gonna use the end platform entrance to enter the trip platform. Uh, maybe take a photo of the train for the thumbnail? Dude, your video is about transit centers, not trains! The train departed Clairview, passing through the LRT depot to Belvedere. It's almost three hours since I started this. I arrived at Belvedere. This walkway to the transit center is a great train spotting location. The transit center is a park and ride one with some industrial buildings nearby. Feels like these shelters and ramps are new because they look pretty modern. You might think that missing a connection like this will just push the rest of the journey back by like 10 minutes. Nope. Since many buses have different headways like 10, 15 or 20 minutes, this single missed connection might result in an additional hour to the journey. I just went inside Belvedere right away to reach the next stop. Coliseum Station. This transit center provides connection to the Northlands and Expo Center where many fascinating events and festivals happen. There is a park next to it, so it can be hard to spot buildings around it. Coliseum also has some bike parking right by the station's entrance. I'll take Route 8 from here to reach Abbots Field Transit Center. Route 8 is a high frequency route, and the bus arrived 6 minutes before the scheduled departure. This is again an example of layover time to alleviate delays. Let's say if this bus was 5 minutes delay, then this time gap will reduce it to 1 minute. 118 Avenue is pretty bumpy and feel very long, but I made it to the Riverview Mall aka the front of the transit center. Abbots Field Transit Center is behind the mall, and to my surprise, the bus arrived before my next planned arrival. The next bus I'm taking is Route 101, arriving at 11.37. It is now 11.33. I cannot believe my luck, guys. The fact that the transit center has to face garbage bins and loading zones is a health hazard to me, and somewhat of an insult too. Because I don't know about you, but public libraries and public transit go hand in hand together. 
Abbott's Field also likes curbs for buses, I guess, because some buses here have to stop on the side of the road, posing an accessibility issue for people requiring mobility aids. And with the 101 departing on time, I headed to Stadium Station. Stadium Station got a rework recently, where the underground portion of the station got buried, and a smoother and more open connection between the bus station and the platforms were established. It is also one of the original LRT stations that were opened for the Commonwealth Games in 1978. The station and transit center is now a park and ride stop. I then waited 10 minutes for a bus on Route 3 to arrive, and it did arrive on time. I decided to go straight to its terminus, West Mount, instead of stopping at Kingsway Transit Center. Kingsway, Royal Alex, checked. The whole transit center is called that to include the Royal Alexandra Hospital, but Everyone just remember it as Kingsway because of the mall. Massive respect to all the doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers, by the way. The bus travels down 111 Avenue and reach Westmount Transit Center. This also borders Westmount Mall and a door to go inside instead of the garages and garbage bins. It also provides coverage to the Ross Shepherd High School and the new Science Center. It also has regional connections for Route 203 to St. Albert, but it doesn't come inside the terminal. I waited for the 52 to arrive to hit the next transit center, Jasper Place. Route 52 is another crosstown bus, but it's also very infrequent during the daytime. But it was the fastest connection that I could get to Jasper Place after traversing through the bumpy 111 Avenue and the construction of the Valley Line West. Here's one of the two longest layovers I had, 25 minutes in Jasper Place until the next bus. Thankfully, the terminal has a public washroom and is very spacious with a park, and some buses even park here before their trips start. I utilized this time to charge my camera before the bus arrived. This roof low-key looks like an airport terminal roof, am I right? The next bus I took was the 912 to Lewis Farms. It's a pretty tiny bus from a company called Vicinity. The stop request button has braille signs on it too, but my camera refused to focus on it when I filmed them. This is an amazing feature for accessibility. The bus went through some industrial and business park areas and looped inside a parking lot of a Walmart before hitting the highway to get to Lewis Farms. I saw so many more construction of the Valley Line West Depot and Lewis Farms station here. Lewis Farms is the westernmost terminal of Edmonton, but the city expands further west than that. Made me underestimate how big Edmonton is. I was ahead by 3 minutes, so I just hopped on the 900X bus to go to West Edmonton Mall Transit Center. Enjoyed some fast pace on the highway and then arrived at the Webb Transit Center with the next bus already waiting for me, Route 56 to Meadows. This terminal is temporary due to the construction of the Valley Line West, but it has heated shelters and ticket machines too. And with the 56 already waiting for me, I guess I'm in big luck today, especially when the bus will be an earlier departure compared to my plan. On the way leaving Webb, I get to see Valleyland West Viaduct is now completed from the future Wem station and to where it descends on 87 Avenue. Bravo to Marigold for your work and for sharing my video. Check it out! I was behind by just 5 minutes and now I'm ahead by 6 minutes. Guess nothing else can go wrong and I think I might even finish this video ahead of time. Are you sure about that? You sure about that? The driver made a wrong turn onto the highway, so the easiest way for them is to travel on the highway and make a U-turn at the next intersection, which added another 15 minutes of unnecessary travel on the highway. I'm not blaming the driver. Their route is super long, so it is unavoidable that a wrong turn can happen. I take back what I said about finishing ahead of time, but in retrospect, this might mean my other long connection at Meadows can be reduced to a shorter wait instead of 28 minutes. I eventually made it to the Leger Transit Center. This transit center is by the Terwilliger Recreation Center and a high school. The closest neighborhood to it is Terwilliger Town with an E. I had to add that because it literally has an E in town. The bus passes through the White Mud Creek and I reach Century Park for the third time today and then headed to the next one, Millwoods Transit Center. You can visit my Valley Line video to learn more about it. Honorable mention. The old Millwoods Transit Center was at the Millwoods Library, but got decommissioned for its current location to connect with the Valley Line. Millwoods, check. 
the journey from Millwoods to Meadows take forever. And at some point, I feel like I'm at the eastern edge of the city already, but I wasn't. Is that a just one more lane bro a moment that I'm experiencing? Yep, it is. I finally made it to the easternmost transit center of the city, Meadows. This terminal mostly services on-demand and buses go into the southeast neighborhoods of the city. Meadows has public washrooms and a lot of nice artworks, and close to some commercial stores and restaurants. I'm a bit surprised to see a neighborhood and transit terminal at the edge of the city in the suburb got so busy. Guys, the bus to Davies are right here, instead of me having to wait another 25 minutes. I honestly could not believe my luck. The original plan involved a long wait here, but look at me go. I noticed that the bus was not departing for another 5 minutes, so I just walked around and quickly filmed the bus stop. Route 504 then took me along 17th Street, but at some pretty empty part of the city that I've never been to. It then looped inside a residential community called Maple Oak Ridge that is full of pre-built homes and trailers and you can bring your pre-built home to an available lot here. Wait, is this finally the affordable housing dream that I can afford? Some of the pre-built homes I looked at were much cheaper than the housing market. Maple Oak Ridge left me so many questions that I want answers to. First, why is it sort of out of nowhere like this? Second, why is it full of trailer parks and pre-built homes? Third, why does it have a community office? But I'll leave those questions behind to continue my journey. 17th Street feels so suffocating with the amount of trucks that it's handling. My curiosity then got switched to some bus stops. Why do they have these barriers? It is definitely an interesting way to signify people that it is a bus stop, but why? 50 industrial buildings later and I made it to Davies Station and the Davies Transit Center. I talked a lot about Davies already, but here's a fun fact. It replaced the old Millgate Transit Center, which is now decommissioned and became a recycling depot. I do hope those extra bus stops might be used soon. I hopped on the bus on Route 6 immediately to reach the next transit center, Southgate, the second time of the day that I'm passing through it. I'm already about 15 minutes behind the planned schedule, and the train just escalated this delay by slowly rolling through the crossing. Okay, not only just slowly rolling, it outright stopped. I'm like, I like trains, but in this situation, I really hope I can snap the train away like Thanos did. I finally pulled into Southgate. The transit center facilitates intercity connections smoothly next to city buses. The station is linked with the terminal by a covered skywalk, but not to the mall. Southgate is a pretty important hub simply because it connects passengers from the university to reach commercial areas in the south side of the city. I decided to get a drink in the mall because it has been thirsty and I have not used the washroom. There are only three transit centers left from here. I feel like I'm a transit operator right now with the food that I brought with me. Transit operators don't even have a proper place to eat their meals and they do sacrifice themselves a lot to keep people moving on time. So the least you could do is please respect them. What you gonna do? I'ma be here and eat my tofu. The next transit center is South Campus Fort Edmonton Park. South Campus has a waiting room like all transit centers and a public washroom. The shelter is sealed and feels hotter than outside, so I just quickly hop out of it. I hope those heaters do function well in the winter though. This transit center has an extra track for the train and multiple buses connecting to the southwest neighborhoods as well as on-demand service to Fort Edmonton Park. There are walking paths connecting to research and office facilities nearby. Wait, are those tinted windows? They look kinda dark from outside. At this point, I don't really care if my plan is not followed by the real-time scenario. From here on, all the routes that I travel on have good frequency, so I don't have to strictly time myself too much. I got off at Corona Station to walk to the Government Transit Center. This is different from the government center station because it is a solid 10 minute walk between the two places. I suspect that it might has a connection to the station using the legislative building or the pedway. This terminal has connection to regional buses but it looks very empty and I have a feeling that it is the least used transit center in the city. The waiting room is eerily quiet and empty, like this can be a film scene for a movie. The terminal only has one bus route that serves it all days of the week. Route 701. 
Other routes are mainly express and regional routes active during rush hours or weekday only. I waited for a bus to arrive and there is finally one, but it left like almost immediately. Bro came in the terminal and be like, I'd, I'm a head out. <laughs> On that note, I'd, I'm a head out of here as well. I could have waited for a bus from here instead of walking, but this is the part where I walk down the street feeling slightly enraged and blessed at the same time. Blessed because these streets here are mostly residential buildings and I get to experience a vibe of downtown that is different from the corporate offices and lousy commercial businesses. But enraged because of the transit missing link. To go from government transit center to the last transit center, Capilano, I either can walk for 15 minutes and then catch route 1A or 1B, or take a bus to go 5 blocks and then transfer. I don't like transfers anyways, but I really wish route 1A and B can go an additional 5 blocks on 100 or 99 Avenue to terminate at the government center, instead of just stopping in a random sidewalk in downtown. This is called a missing link that inconvenience riders with unnecessary transfers where the routes could have just been extended a little more and RM Transit made a video about that. I finally found the sidewalk where route 1A and 1B terminates. This is technically not a transit center but it is just a terminating point. Route 1B departed on time this time and I'm so excited to finally hit Capilano to mark this journey completed. Also, honorable mention. This is the downtown transit hub of Edmonton. It is technically not a transit center, but it is where a lot of buses go through or terminate to transfer. It was closed for the construction of an extended pathway network, which will open in November 2024, hopefully. Route 1B traverses through some nice and hilly roads, crossing the river and arrives at Capilano. The terminal is behind a mall again, which made me question whether malls hate transit or what. Logically, malls are where a lot of people use transit to reach it. So shouldn't they facilitate a good connection for pedestrians? Thank you. I can't believe I made it guys. The timer is now at 10 hours and 8 minutes. Much more delayed compared to the original plan, but this involved me not caring too much about it at the end of the rides. Anyways, this is still less than 12 hours and I hope someone will create a shorter journey than this in the future. But this journey really documented the hard work of ETS transit workers and keeping a vast, populated city moving with hundreds of bus routes and vehicles on the road transporting people as on time as they could. Also, keep in mind that this journey was done on a weekday. Had I done this on a weekend, it might have taken significantly longer due to some routes have a lower frequency or just don't operate. Before ending the video, I have one last honorable mention to give. This is the Lakewood Transit Center, not too far from Millwoods. While not officially a transit center, it serves as an important terminal for high school students and visitors at the recreation center nearby. Like I said in the intro, I've never seen anybody holding an art card or ETS bus pass to do this, so I hope someone will and complete a journey that finished in less than 10 hours like me. Bye for now, and thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next videos. In case you didn't know, my channel has super likes and members enabled. Join my channel to enjoy some exclusive updates on my future videos and participate in the brainstorming or scripting of the videos. I also would like to thank all supporters from Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee who helped keep this channel going. I appreciate any amount that you chip in as they do help cover some expenses for these videos. See you soon!